If you find yourself rushing because your watercolour painting is drying too fast, then knowing how to use a spray bottle can be a great help to you. I was once doing a full sheet watercolour painting that had a wash that was two thirds of the paper size and it all had to be done in one go. And the only way I was able to do that was to use a spray bottle to keep that portion of the painting that I was working on wet until I totally finished that section. Using a spray bottle is all about timing and technique. To understand how a spray bottle can be so useful, you also have to understand just how water reacts on the surface of your paper. Using a spray bottle can both save your painting and help you create a better one. One of the first things you need to know about water is that water is attracted to water. What I mean by that is water molecules are attracted to other water molecules and that's what causes raindrops to create a spherical shape or droplets of water on a leaf for instance or the surface tension on water. When you fill a glass with water you can fill it above the rim of the glass and it's the attraction of water molecules to water molecules keeping that water above the top of the glass. Why is this important? We can use a spray bottle to, so that the tiniest droplets are attracted to the wet surface of our paper more than they are to the dry part of the paper. In this bottle I've filled it with clean water and I've added quite a big dollop of Winsor Newton's uh, Winsor Blue Green Shade paint and some permanent rose. The colour is not important, I just wanted a contrasting colour so that when I show you how water is attracted to water, you'll see how the, the areas that I wet will have more of the moisture from the bottle landing on them than the paper surrounding those areas. I've got a sheet of paper here. I'm going to pick up some clean water and I'm going to draw with my brush a pattern. And, and this is just purely for, for as an exercise so we don't have to do anything special here. So that's just a grid pattern and there's quite a, a shine on that paper. The water is sort of flying down the paper so we've got a lot more moisture down here. Now I'm going to let that sink into the paper so that we get to the point where there isn't so much shine. Right now it's still a little bit too wet. When we refer to shine on our watercolour painting this is what we're talking about. Basically, uh, there's so much water on the surface of your paper that light bounces off it and shines back up. If you keep painting in that situation, uh, you won't create mud. You'll have uh, nice, clean washes and any wet on wet passages will flow into one another in a very clean fashion. To speed this along, I'm just going to lift some of these little puddles of water that are forming down below, or beads of water. There we go. So we'll just give that a minute and then we'll, we'll continue with the exercise. This attraction of water to water is not very strong, so if I was to spray directly at the paper, the force of the the droplets coming out would not be affected by the wet parts of the paper. What I, what I want is only the tiniest droplets to land on my paper and any of the bigger droplets I want to land off the paper itself. Obviously when, you, when you're using the spray bottle like this you need to make sure that the, the area beyond your painting surface doesn't have a, anything on it that's going to be damaged by water hitting it. So instead of spraying down at this angle with, with the spray nozzle directly at the painting, I hold it perpendicular to the paper. So it's just coming square, square on like this. So from above you can only see the top. And I'm generally over the area that I want to spray with the clean water. I don't spray from a distance. If I'm too far away the big droplets are the ones that are going to land on my painting, whereas if I spray from here, only the lightest droplets will be stopped by the air and then that hopefully gently land on your painting. 
I'll just spray it once or twice just to clean out the nozzle. And now uh, this, I'm just going to spray on this very light. And I'm moving my hand backwards and forwards. I'm not going to do any more than that. But hopefully you can see already how the areas that were already wet are absorbing a lot more of the water. So that's showing you how the water is being attracted to these wet areas. Obviously, if you keep spraying, you'll get more and more uh, of this uh, wetness on the rest of your paper. So it's not something that you can just keep spraying and spraying. Sooner or later, if you wet the rest of the paper enough, uh, um, it will start to be equally wetted by the spray. But in this case, uh, you can see how these wet areas are showing up so much darker than the, the dry areas around it. We use this when we're spraying our painting to keep the working area wet for longer. I'm going to show you probably the biggest mistake artists make when they use a spray bottle to try and retain the shine on their paper. So I'm just going to pick up just a weak, very weak mix here just so you can see what's happening on my paper. And I'll paint, we'll just paint a little shape. Just barely tinting the paper, just enough so that you can see where I've wet it. And then they'll pick up the spray bottle, and instead of keeping the spray bottle you know, perpendicular to the paper over and over the area that they're going to spray, or right on the edge of that area, they get a little bit timid and move further back, point the spray bottle at the area they're trying to wet, and just very lightly spray. And you can see what's happened here. The big droplets now actually land on the surface of their painting rather than just the lightest droplets. If you think of these big blue droplets as clear water, they land on the paper and push the other paint away and create little white dots everywhere, which you'll see later um, when I show you how to create them on purpose. So you need to hold your spray bottle directly over the area, perpendicular, and spray that way. And you can see how now those big droplets are no longer landing on the wet part of my painting, but instead landing off the paper. When using a spray bottle, timing is very important. I'm just going to mix a little puddle of some French ultramarine permanent rose and burnt sienna. The colours aren't important, I'm just trying to mix a, a strong mixture of paint. Just a nice clean wash. And remember, the right time to use a spray bottle is while the paper still has a nice shine on it. Yeah. So if we look at this, you can see how the surface down here, at least, has still got quite a lot of shine on it, and it's just starting to dry at the top. If I was to go into that painting at this stage, say I pick up some another colour, and if I put a mark on that, the paint will nicely blend in with the rest of the uh, paint that's already on the surface. Once this dries to the point where that shine starts to disappear, that's when you're more likely to, uh, when you use the spray bottle, if you don't use it properly, um, and you get big droplets landing on the surface of your paper, you get white dots appearing. So I'm going to try and achieve that up in this area. This area is still quite wet, but just press, there you go. I'm, I'm purposefully pressing 
just very lightly so that the big droplets land here. And if you have a look at that, you can see how these big droplets are creating little white pale areas, which in effect are little cauliflowers on the surface of your painting. So the main cause of that is pointing the bottle at the, long, at the wrong angle or just being a little bit timid with your spray so that the big droplets, instead of shooting past your painting, land on the wet surface. Ideally, you should use the spray bottle while the surface of your painting is still wet and shining. You have to be using the spray bottle so that it's more perpendicular over the surface of your painting so that only the lightest droplets land on the wet part of your painting. So let me show you how to do this. So if I paint, let's paint a bigger rectangle. And, and now this still has quite a lot of shine on it. And as I did before, I can go in with some other colour. Let them run into one another. And that's no problem. Now if I spray and hold the bottle above that area, none of the big drops land on this area, plus the lightest drops just land on the surface of the paper and keep that shine for longer. As I mentioned earlier, I had one painting, a very large beach scene, and almost two-thirds of the painting had to be painted in one go. I started by wetting the bottom two-thirds of the painting, except for the little brown sand islands, and then painted the blue wash into the wet areas. I kept the wet areas wet and the sand islands dry by using the spray bottle technique I've been showing you in this video. And I kept the surface workable for about an hour and a half while I finished that section. So again, you know, this is just starting to lose its shine up here. So I'll grab the bottle, continuing to spray. See how I'm spraying over the area, not at the area, and not from a distance away. And you can see how this shine is just continuing to stay on the surface. This one here has lost its shine, so if I was to spray on it, I'd get even more cauliflowers. The worst possible time is just before the paint dries, and then what can happen, you might have a section where the paint's dry, and you have an area that's still damp, and you, if you spray and keep spraying on that, what'll happen is the, the area that's still damp will just slowly wash away and the dry area will stay as a sharp shape. Now obviously the best time to have done this was while it was still shiny. Once you start losing that shine it gets a little it gets a little bit more difficult. Up to now we've been looking at a technique for keeping the surface of your painting workable but sometimes you want to create little dots on your paper in which case you wait until most of the shine is gone, so you can see very little shine there. And then you just, just very lightly, you point your spray bottle at the painting surface and then just very lightly press so the only big droplets will tend to come out and they'll be a lot more forceful and they create this textured effect on the surface of your painting. A number of very well-known artists use this technique to create areas of mystery, within um, the foreground of their, their paintings. It's a nice technique if you know how to do it well and you do it for the right reason. Any effect you, cre you can create at will is a useful effect. It's the ones that happen where you don't want them that more often than not, instead of being a happy accident, they're a bit of a disastrous accident. So what's the best type of spray bottle to use? I find these are the best bottles, uh, the ones that you press down as opposed to the, the trigger spray. So these trigger bottles have just too much power when you're trying to use them as spray bottles. Um, maybe if you experiment with them, you might find the right technique that'll work for you, but primarily I, I don't use these trigger ones. 
I use these ones with a button that you press down. And you want a spray bottle that has a very fine mist. Now, this one uh, you can buy from the haberdashery section of most um, large grocery stores or something similar. It's anti-static spray. And uh, so if you had stockings or something like that, this is something I've been told anyway, uh, that people use to spray on it and it stops the stocking from clinging to the rest of their clothing. Uh, so I, that's where I bought this from. Obviously I threw out all the, the anti-static spray, gave it a good wash, and it's been very useful for many years. And, and when you press the button, you can sort of see the mist just sort of gently uh, floating down. A good way to see whether you're, you're getting any spray on your painting is you put your hand like this and then you hold your, the spray bottle close to it and you should feel a coolness on your, the back of your hand and that tells you that only the finest droplets are coming down and landing on your painting. So that's what I use. Um, you know, they come in lots of different versions uh, not all necessarily for anti-static spray. Um, this is this is one I got for cleaning glasses and that. It also has a good spray. Obviously, for this exercise, I've put paint in it, which you normally wouldn't do. So I, I just suggest you experiment. If you can get one of these anti-static sprays, they're they're pretty good. But really, check out you know any cheap two-dollar shop for spray bottles and um, until you find the right one that works for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it helps you to paint better watercolours. In a future video, I'm going to discuss how wetting the back of the paper can help you work even longer without the front of your paper drying too fast. But in the meantime, please enjoy the rest of my videos.